with its Dota-inspired gameplay. Plus, if you're new to the scene, there's also an added social layer, allowing players to chat, make friends, and even engage in some friendly competition, all which helps the newbies learn the game and try out new abilities. Now, to start off, you choose one of a handful of immortals or heroes to begin your journey. And, working on the simple philosophy of my stick is bigger than yours, get in there and rack up your points, trading knocks on the head for experience which you can use for upgrades. With no additional units to control, battles consist of an arena and two spawn points. Two men enter, but only one comes out alive. So if you're in the mood for a little battle arena magic, Rise of Immortals is available as a free download at the address below. Plenty to keep you busy with. Now, if you didn't catch those links, you can find them on Facebook and Twitter real soon. Right then, from one freebie to another, except this time, we're making our way back to the classics. Now, if you're into strategy, then you've probably heard of our next game. Yep, our little wriggly friends are making a big comeback. It's time for the Demo Derby. Drawing first blood in this triple threat edition of the Derby, it's holy hand grenades and bazookas as we take a turn for the squidgy with Worms Ultimate Mayhem. The latest in this classic line of turn-based blasters, this title works very much like its predecessors. Just be the first on the map to blast your opponents to kingdom come. Now, if you've somehow not yet tried your hand at this tactical tour de force, good news is that Ultimate Mayhem now comes with a handy tutorial, so no excuses for bombing out. Featuring two levels of the story campaign, this bite-sized chunk of the battlefield does a good job of drawing you into the action and putting a smile on your face. A great game to have for when your mates pop around, the demo for Worms Ultimate Mayhem is available for download on the Xbox Live Marketplace right now. Trading in our turn-based shooter action for something a little more arcadey now. A cross between a first-person shooter and that scene in Avatar, in Exotic, your job on this kaleidoscopic adventure is to cleanse the land by replanting the seed of life on a ravaged planet known as the Orb. Now, as you can tell, this arcade blaster is all about multipliers and chain bonus points, so destroy those scabs quickly for a big combo bonus. With a unique scoring system driving the whole experience, as well as lots of secret locations to discover, if you're looking for a blaster that's a little out of the ordinary, get a taste for the exotic at the address below. And finally, saving the best for last, buckle up kids with a game that is widely regarded to be the definitive racing sim of this generation. The demo for Forza Motorsport 4 is finally here. Now, living up to the Forza name is a tough job, but this downloadable demo is a great way to sample some top-class racing action from the boys at Turn 10. Featuring a quick race mode with a choice of three cars, the 1970 Mercury Cougar Eliminator, the 2011 Subaru WRX STI, and my favorite, the 2010 Ferrari 458 Italia. This classy ride comes with some great control, gameplay, and some jaw-dropping graphics, looking at times a little like car porn. So if you like the smell of burnt rubber in the morning and you happen to have an Xbox 360 just lying around, the demo for Forza Motorsport 4 is available for download on the Xbox Live Marketplace right now. My, my, Forza 4 has definitely not let us down. Plenty of action to get you started before you decide you actually want to pay for it. All right, lads, time for a quick break, but you'd better not let me catch you touching that remote. Oh, no, especially not when the lineup coming up next includes... An inside look at what to expect with the remake of a classic franchise. And a glance at what else is in store for us in the coming months. Hey guys, welcome back to Game. You're with me, Kelly. Now, if you were into strategy games way back in the DOS days of computing, then the name XCOM should ring a bell. 
Inspired by the TV series UFO and the book Alien Liaison by Timothy Goods, the franchise first titled UFO, Enemy Unknown, has been with us since 1994. Fast forward nearly 20 years and we're eagerly anticipating the dawn of a new era. With a total shift in direction for the series, let's take a look inside at what the developers of the new XCOM have to say. XCOM is a, uh, you know, it's a really beloved franchise and it's one that, um, you know, personally means a lot to me. It's a, it's a game that I treasured years and years ago and so it's super exciting to be able to come back and um, sort of reinvigorate the franchise with a, with a new entry that really uh, adheres to the tenets of what made the, the original games so special. Our telling of XCOM is an origin story. It's about experiencing the origins of this organization from a, from a really zoomed in and boots on the ground perspective. We really wanted to make you feel like what it was like to be one of the squaddies in the original game and not the all-knowing top-down commander. Past games were all about a global um, UFO defense agency, a uh, kind of task force made of the best of the best from across the whole world uh, who were supposed to repel an alien invasion. Uh, in XCOM, our game, which is its own kind of new origin story uh, that follows its own timeline, uh, X XCOM begins as a United States federal task force um, built out of intelligence officers from the CIA and DIA. Their job is to repel an invasion from within the country. They're being infiltrated and they know it. We've taken a lot of the, the mythos that had been previously established and sort of reimagined it or re-engineered it, like sort of the very small, humble roots of the organization before it became this globe-spanning you know, globally funded anti-alien defense force. We wanted the aliens in XCOM to be unique and be compelling and surprising. Portray them not as your, your archetypical nasty snarling monster alien, but by um, sort of looking to um, a, a very technology-based aesthetic. One of their primary goals in being here is actually to terraform our world, to transform it into something that, for them. At first you see small little signs, like small little bits of cancer sort of starting to grow and form and grow in our world um, and it seems very kind of jagged and sort of uh, very disruptive but that's because it's youthful and in, in, in our world and our world are very much like like oil and water or like you know kind of like matter and antimatter they kind of fight each other but eventually what you see throughout the game is eventually their world kind of wins and starts to grow and become more this cubic you know, perfect kind of pristine uh, uh, version of, of their own home world. The XCOM uh, of our game is a kind of unconventional organization by the standards of the time. Um, it has an idiosyncratic thinker that puts it put it together and is specifically looking for people who are compensating for some kind of disadvantage. So you'll, you'll find a lot of the core cast are not necessarily what people think of as an invincible G-man. Uh, they, they have a different background or they come from a, a politically more sensitive uh, sort of demographic. And uh, over the course of the game, you get to you get to know why that was, why why the character who put it together uh, thinks that that's necessary. The base is really the hub of XCOM as an organization. Um, it changes and evolves over the course of the game. It's some place that you return to after every single mission, uh, and it serves as both a sort of story and social space for you to have conversations with the characters, learn more about the world of XCOM, uh, see how people other people are reacting to the war as it progresses, and really immerse yourself in in the world of 1962. Um, but it's also your main hub for gameplay. You will um, obviously manage and recruit agents. Agents are your extensions of your willpower out in the battlefield, your buddies that you use to combat the alien threat. Um, you'll be upgrading their powers, leveling them up. Uh, it's very sort of RPGs. The primary impact of uh, choosing one mission over another is economical, meaning it affects the core player growth curve. You can decide to invest in this piece of research and not that, or this agent power and this agent upgrade, and let another one atrophy. As a result, uh, individual players can kind of customize uh, the, the the sort of array of options they've got in the field uh, based on th those choices. XCOM is a story about some real people, some people with flaws and conflicts, and they're thrown into this situation against, uh, you know, essentially overwhelming enemy that, um, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to tell if they can even be defeated. And only by assembling the, the, you know, the brightest minds, the smartest people that the world has to offer, are you even going to have a hope of defeating this enemy.
XCOM will be released for Microsoft Windows, Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 with a projected release date of March 6th next year. But what else is there to look forward to? Well, let's find out. It's time for the preview. Kickstarting this edition of the preview. The year is 2069 and the world, let's just say it's changed a little. This is Syndicate. A reboot of the classic tactical strategy game from the mid-1990s. Step into the role of Miles Kilo, the latest prototype protecting the front lines of global commerce. Looking more than a little like Deus Ex, this new lease of life in the Syndicate series has been described as a mix between crisis-style first-person shooting with the aesthetics of Mass Effect. Interesting combo, if we do say so ourselves. So look out for this bioengineered and chip-augmented baby to hit the shelves sometime in February next year. Next up, we cozy with the latest bit of cinema from the highly anticipated action extravaganza, I Am Alive. Set in the city of Chicago, after a major earthquake separates it from the rest of civilization, player's middle-class hero, Adam Collins, a man forced into dire circumstances to find the people he loves. What are you doing here, boy? Now, those of you with elephant memory may remember hearing about this game way back in 2008. But since then, the game has gone through a conceptual and technical reboot. And from the look of this early trailer, does seem to play similarly to other Ubisoft platformers like Prince of Persia. Powered by the same engine which runs Splinter Cell Conviction, look for more info ahead of its release sometime at the end of this year. There is a problem, Mr. Tokai, on the second sub-level. And finally, wrapping things up on this edition of The Preview, one for these survival horror fans as we check in with the progress of the upcoming third-person shocker, Afterfall Insanity. Don't worry, dog. Set in an alternate universe in the year 2032, this futurist nightmare is all about a society living under the shadow of World War III and a plot to find out the origins of the Confinement Syndrome. It all started. We didn't even notice. With humans struggling to survive amongst decaying shelters and mutants abound, no escaping the darkness when the afterfall hits us later in November. You know, the more I watch these game previews, the more I believe that the world is going to turn into some horrible, twisted place with zombies and aliens and assassins. But I also believe that some big, burly, handsome guy will come and save me from whatever perils lie ahead. Okay, that's it for this edition of Game. Remember, if you're still craving that little bit more, you can check out the website ESPNStar.com slash game for the best bits. Or you can check out our Facebook page to chat with like-minded gaming enthusiasts at Facebook.com slash ESS Game. And Twitter is where we have all the details to the links to the games you just saw. Follow us at Twitter.com slash ESS Game. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.